Well, it's been a great start to the new year for photography here in the southwest of the UK, having a few stormy days coinciding with high tides. And already one week in, I've got two keepers that I'm really happy with, namely this one and this one. And it's in this second one that I want to show you what I guess you would call special effects that I did using just Lightroom. And also one extra little thing that I did in Photoshop. But first of all, let's take a look at the effects I created in Lightroom. So here's the final retouch picture where we have this foggy scene, some gulls flying, and you can also see that the lights here are on. But in this version of the photograph, you can see that the majority of the fog has disappeared. There's no birds flying, and also the lights aren't on. So let me show you first of all how I added that extra fog. So all I'm going to do then is come over to the masking panel in Lightroom and then I'm going to click to add a new mask and I'm going to use a linear gradient. Then I'm going to go over into my picture and click and drag down from the sky. Now as I drag down you'll notice that it can move around like this. So if I want to lock it in place so it just comes straight down, I just press down on my shift key and that locks it so that we get a nice straight gradient coming all the way down the picture. Now the red overlay is going to represent where the fog's going to be. So I take it down to around about there. So the majority of the density of the fog is in the top part and on the horizon and a little bit here more creeping into this kind of middle area here. So now that we've got that, all I then do is come down to the effects section within the masking and here we have texture, clarity and dehaze and it's the dehaze that I want to use. Now ordinarily when we use dehaze, we're going to drag it over to the right hand side to bring back areas, areas that we wouldn't necessarily see so clearly. But if we take it the other way, rather than dehazing, we are actually hazing. We're going to add in haze. So if I take it to the left, look at now what happens to the picture. So there we go, all the way over to the left hand side. So if I take that mask now and turn it off and on by pressing down on the eye icon, this is before and this is after. So we've added like a mist, a sea mist, a kind of a fog effect. Now we can also change this to make it even more dense in this kind of middle area by clicking on the actual linear gradient itself and just dragging further down. So now if we look at the actual overlay, the denser part here, and then we get this graduated section, the denser part is being dragged down. So that's going to affect more of the picture to make the fog look as if it's even more dense. But I don't quite want it as dense as that, so I'll click and drag so that we get it around about this area here so that the horizon line there is deeply in the fog and this foreground area here, this middle and foreground area, is getting a little bit of it. And that's the thing about retouching, whether it be in Lightroom or in Photoshop. It's so often that it's just the simplest things that are the most effective. But now let me show you how I turn those lights on. Okay, so again, I'll go to the masking panel, but first of all, let's just rename the fog mask here so we know exactly what we've got. So we'll go to the three dots to the right-hand side, choose Rename, and I'll just call this one Fog. So next thing we'll do then is create a new mask. So I click on the plus icon, and this time I'm going to go for a radial gradient. So I'll click on radial gradient, and then I'm going to click to zoom in on this particular street lamp just here. Now with that radial gradient, I'm going to click in the center part here where we have the actual light bulb coming down, click and drag outwards. Now it doesn't really matter if I get a perfectly round radial gradient because I'm going to change the shape of it anyway. But I'll drag it out to around about there. And then I'm just going to resize it and reshape it. We don't want it to be perfectly round because obviously the filament within the light wouldn't be perfectly round anyway but maybe something around about, let's go for like that, just a little bit more, there we go. That kind of shape just there will probably be just about right. Some of it does go onto the top of the light there, but what I can do now is just with this mask, I'll go to subtract, I'll get a brush, and making sure over here on the right hand side of the settings for the brush that the feather is way down, so nice hard brush. And I'm just going to brush that off there so it doesn't spill over onto the light itself. And then all I'll simply do to turn this light on is come to the light section and use exposure. And look, as I drag this over to the right-hand side, 
keep an eye on what happens to the bulb area where we've just put this radial gradient. So that's off. And now we're starting to turn that light on. I mean, that is just so incredibly effective. Absolutely love it. So that's that just there. Now, we can take this a step further. Again, it's the small things that you do that make the big difference. And obviously for this light here, there would ordinarily be a little bit of a filament, so it wouldn't be perfectly rounded kind of shape to it. So we need to rough it up a little bit so it has that feel of being a filament, even though it's a small part within the picture. Now to do that, I just simply went down to the effects section here where we have grain. And I'm gonna take the grain over to increase it. And look, look what happens to the shape of the light as I increase that grain. So I'll take it over and start to take, can you see that now? Look, look how it's changing. It's a bit of a random kind of effect to it there, but I think personally that's a bit more realistic and kind of look to the, the filament within the light itself. All right, so that's the bulb that's on. But obviously, if we've got a light on here, it would be lighting up some of the actual pole that's holding that bulb up in the sky just here. So I need to add some light onto this. Let me first rename this uh, mask to make sure that I know what's what. So we'll come into the three dots and go rename. And I'll call this one light one. And now I need to put some light onto the actual uh, street light uh, pole here, I guess you'd call it. So again, I'm going to use a mask. And this time I'm gonna to go to object. So I'm gonna create a mask of the object. I need to tell Lightroom what the object is that I want to light up. So I'll literally just get the overlay and brush over this part of it just here. And look, as I let go now, look, see the red overlay? It knows that that's what I wanted. Absolutely brilliant. So it's made a really good selection of the actual light pole or the street lamp pole there. And then all I'll do for now is I'm gonna increase the exposure and maybe just a little bit on the shadows as well. So you can see, look, if I turn that off and on, we can see that it's bright. But the only thing now is, obviously the light at the top here, the top part of this pole will be where the majority of the light is hitting, and it would get less and less as it's coming down. So I need to kind of create that effect, and that's really simple to do. Before I do it, let's just rename this so we know what we've got. We'll go to Rename, and I'll call this Light. Whoops, let's just go to uh, light one and I'll call it pole. And then what I'll do is come to the three dots to the right hand side of the name and I'm gonna go to intersect the mask using, I'm gonna go with a linear gradient. So now all I need to do is click and drag downwards with that gradient. So what I'm doing now is I'm only allowing the brightness that I added onto that pole to be visible within the linear gradient. So look, that's where the linear gradient is at the moment. If I turn the overlay on, you can see what we've got. So the red overlay is shown where the actual majority of the light is being revealed on that mask, and then it gets less and less and less as we come further down. Absolutely incredible technology that we have now within Lightroom, especially with that intersect. I might just drag that up just a little bit higher. There we go. So let's just turn off the overlay. So what I'll do now, look, I'll turn off that linear gradient. Keep an eye on the pole itself just there so you can see what it looked like before. That's before when it's, the whole of the pole has got the light on, and that's after when we've used that intersect. So the majority of the light is falling on that top part. All right, so now that's that light illuminated just there. I need to add some light into this one over here on the wall. Very simple to do. I'm just going to come to the first one that I did here, which was the bulb for the first light. I'll go to the three dots and I'm gonna choose Duplicate Light 1. So that'll create a copy of it. I can then come in, click and drag that over onto the light just there. I do need to remove some of it off the top, so we'll go to Subtract and we'll go to Brush. I'm gonna use a brush to do it. The settings remain the same as before, so we've got a nice hard brush and I'll just brush it off the top part of the bulb just there. So that light's on. I can independently make that brighter or not so bright if I want to. But if you wanted to add just a little bit of light hitting onto that wall as well, coming off this bulb, that would be really simple to do. What I will do first of all is uh, just rename this one. We've got light one copy. Let's just change that to light two. And then I'll just create another mask, this time using a radial gradient. And we'll click and drag outwards, something like that, let's say. And about there, and just 
gradually pump up just a little bit of that exposure. It doesn't need to be much, real small amount. Like I said before, it's the small things that make the big difference. So let's have a look what we've got here. Let's just rename that and I'll put light uh, two and we'll say wall. There we go. Right, let's zoom out now. Let's go to fit and we'll come out of the masking. So you can see now, look, we've got the fog added and we've got those two lights just added there. So again, it's just doing those real simple things that can make a big difference to the picture. But let me just show you now to finish off how I added those gulls flying in across the water. Now that was really simple to do. When I was taking the actual photograph of this scene here, what I also did was made sure to grab a little bit of video on my phone here of this one particular gull flying across the water just there. So what I did to add the gulls in, I'd get this video to a certain point, let's just say there, and then I would get a screen grab of that just particular part just there. So I've got that bird, and you can see there it is just there. That'll now go onto my desktop. Let's just move it along just a little bit. I'll go for that one. I'll create another grab of that. There we can see that grab. That'll go on my desktop. Go to the video, and I'll move over to, say, that one there, and we'll just get one third one. Let's go. Just one final one just there. So now that we've got those, let me come back over into Lightroom. And I need to send this now over into Photoshop because obviously we can't use masks on other layers and stuff like that in Lightroom. We need to use Photoshop. So I will go to the File menu and choose Edit in Photoshop. That will open Photoshop up. And here's the actual image now in Photoshop. So what I'll then do is go to File and Open. And I'll navigate to my desktop. And we can see here, look, here's those three grabs of those gulls that I've just made. So let's just open those up as well. And all I will do is get my move tool and I'll drag that one over onto my image and put that in just there. I'll resize it in a minute, but to get rid of all this gray original background around it, I don't need to do any kind of cutouts whatsoever. I can just come over to the layer and where we have the layer name to the right hand side of it, I'll just double click to bring up the layer style. And in the middle here, we have the blend if. And I'm going to use this top gradient just here for the current layer. And I want to get rid of the brighter parts on that layer, which is the sky going around it. And I do that by simply getting to this point over on the right hand side and dragging it over to the left. And look, as I drag that over to the left, look what eventually happens to the sky around that particular bird. So get it over and eventually it starts to disappear like that. Now you can also hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows to split this in half, just to feather it just a little bit to soften down the transition where you've actually removed it, just in case it looks a little bit too harsh, something like that. You gotta be careful though when you do that, that you don't bring back some of that original background. But I think that's looking good. So that's one, let's just go and get the other one. And all of these are on three individual layers, but what I am going to do is just shift click so they're all highlighted and then hold down the command key on Mac or control key on Windows and press E to combine them all onto one layer. And then I'm just going to resize them. Let's just make them a little bit smaller. So they're way in the distance, something like that. There we go. And then I'm just going to lower the opacity of them to blend them into the scene just a little bit more. There we go. Cool. There you go, there's the birds added in. So now we've got the fog added, the lights turned on, a little bit of light on the pole, a little bit of light on the wall. And we've also got some birds very quickly and easily added in without making any selections. Now to get that image back from Photoshop into Lightroom, all we need to do is just save it, then close the image, then that will automatically put it back into Lightroom all nicely synced up. But getting back to the picture here, obviously this is the final image, but the original image is this particular one here. This is the out of camera image. Now to get it into that black and white, I used a preset that I have. Now if you want that preset, you're more than welcome to download it. All you need to do is go to the link in the description part of this video. Just sign up for my twice monthly photography, Photoshop and Lightroom newsletter, where you get subscriber only content, like videos that don't appear on this channel, but also downloads. So you'll be able to download that preset and this raw file so that you can go through these steps step by step, which is the best way to learn, not just watching it, but actually doing it.
Well, that's all I've got for you for this video. So uh, as always, I'd really appreciate it if you got something from it by clicking that like button. If you haven't yet, click on subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.